We start with the center console. Remove the screen for the ashtray. Then you have access to the center operating unit. Pull this down carefully and then press upwards. Now the operating unit can be taken out. The electric connection must also be disconnected. The ashtray has two screws which must be removed. And now the ashtray can be taken out. Unplug another connection here. When that's finished, dedicate yourself to the cup holder in the center console. Remove the plastic covering with an assembly wedge. There you'll notice two screws that must be unscrewed. Now the cup holder can be taken out. But caution, even this has an electric connection. In the assembly duct, there's a bracket that also must be taken out. The next screws to be removed are to be found in the stowage compartment. Under the ashtray are two screws. Take them out too. For the removal of the center console, the seats must be slid all the way to the back. The center console is also electrically connected. Disconnect all connections. Now finally comes the moment when you can take the center console out. Lift the console out carefully. And this is how the interior of the Geo looks without the center console. Proceed with the removal of the dashboard. First though, take out the rubber seal in the A pillar and then remove the A pillar paneling. Next up is the instrument cluster. First of all, move the steering column all the way out. In this VIS document, you'll find the order number for the two pull hooks you require to remove the instrument cluster. Again, please disconnect all connections. The next screw to be removed is for the opening lever for the hood. Next up is the covering for the instrument cover. Three screws are to be taken out here. But you have to disconnect all electrical connections before taking out the covering. On the underside, there is another screw that also must be unscrewed. Caution is required for the removal of the air nozzles. In each air nozzle has three clips which need three screwdrivers at the same time to lift them out. Take care that the clips do not break. The nozzle can be slid out gently and then the clips are pressed. With this already removed nozzle, we'll show you in more detail where the screwdriver must engage the clips. We come now to the covering of the steering column. With the assembly wedge, this helps again for the removal. Afterwards, remove the dashboard side cover. Here are the next screws to be removed. Then another screw on the side of the sensor console must go, and then another in the console frame. In the air nozzle cavity, there's also a screw which must be undone. In the installation shaft of the combination instrument are two screws for the lower cover. They must also be unscrewed. Then pull out the cover carefully and loosen all connections. Also the Bowden cable. Now to the passenger side. If a CD changer exists, fold it up and remove the side cover.
Now below, undo three screws at these places and take off the lower paneling. The glove compartment is next. Here also all screws are unscrewed and the connections disconnected. Attention, on the left side there is an auxiliary connection. In the frame of the installation shaft in the lower center console, there are two more screws on the passenger side. Remove these last two screws at the side of the center console. In the following step, remove the command. In addition, undo the screws on the silver clips directly below the device. The clips pull down and the command can be simply taken out. Also here, unclip all connections. Now the hold frame is removed for the command and the lower operating field. Pull the plastic frame out carefully. Next, disconnect the battery. Attention, with the reconnection of the battery, the screw must be tightened to 6 Newton meters. The remaining three air nozzles must also go. You know how that's done. There's still an electrical connection here to separate. In the middle of the dashboard is a loudspeaker. With the assembly wedge, lever it carefully out and unplug the electrical connections. Also at the side, in the airing slit under the screen, is a screw that has to come out. This is the same on the other side. The CD changer is also removed. After undoing the screws and connections, you can take out the device. There is a yellow plug on the right side under the installation shaft of the air nozzle. A screwdriver could help you separate this connection. These screws fasten the dashboard on the passenger side to the bodywork. For the reinstallation, tighten these screws with a torque of 20 Newton meters. We come now to the last steps. In the steering column, this must be supported with a suitable device. Here, two screws are to be unscrewed. For the reinstallation, tighten with 20 Newton meters. Raise the dashboard briefly and the screws are put back in so the steering column is protected and cannot fall down because the steering column could be thereby damaged. Let your colleague know it's time to help you carry out the dashboard from the vehicle. And that was it. The installation occurs, as usual, in the reverse order.